Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching Powertech 10. Here at Motor Tech Features, our goal is to supply you guys with accurate, up-to-date, functional, usable information. None of this not too sure of the facts, but here's my best guess deal that you so often get on YouTube videos. What I'm going to supply you is the benefits of over 64 years of race engine building plus accurate dyno data. No opinions, right? You can argue all you want, those who are argumentative, but you have to argue with Mr. Dyno, not me, because I'm simply telling you what the dyno said. So please, for those potential detractors out there, this is all tested stuff. It is not an opinionated deal whatsoever. Anyway, on with the plot. So exactly what is the plot? Well, that's a good question. What is this about? Well, essentially, we're going to look at carburetor capacity testing on a 572 GM 9.4 to 1 big block. Why are we going to do this? Well, it's all due to the number of requests I see in my email and communications here, there and everywhere. If I get just a request for one subject, that seems peculiar to that guy's engine, I'm probably not going to do it. When I get two, I start to take notice of it. But when it gets to five over a relatively short period, there's one thing we've found out, or I've found out, due to research by magazine editors. When you get about five requests over a period of about two months, what it means is, is there is an audience out there and they have estimated that when requests get to that kind of number, that for everyone that requests it, there's about 50 who don't write in. So when I got to five requests, I made the assumption, right or wrong, that there's probably 250 people out there would like to know the answer. That's enough to justify doing it. And here's what we're going to do. We are going to run two 4150 style carburetors and two 4500 style carburetors, that's the regular carbon dominator carbs, on this 572, which was a project I was doing for Dr. Jamie Myers at Chevrolet, right? Uh, and this was some years ago now. We uh, got talking and he asked me, would I like to update these uh, big blocks, right? And we started on the uh, street one, that's the 9.4 one, and the race one was on down the road. But unfortunately, things didn't turn out right, not because it was a problem Chevrolet's end, it was a problem with my, uh, my lifestyle situation here, which was very unfortunate. Anyway, on with the plot. Let's take a look at what we are going to do here. I've put the video on hold here because I want you to take note of the horsepower figure arrowed on the left hand side and the torque figure arrowed on the right hand side. Now I've highlighted those figures just to show what can be achieved by careful selection of parts. We started off with this engine making 620 
24 horsepower, something like that. Very close to the figures that um, uh, GM advertises. Just a little, our numbers are just slightly above. And we think that was due to the fact that we were using an electric pump instead of a regular one. So, essentially what we did was find about 175 horsepower here over what GM had. That was more than their race engine. Now bear in mind this is a 9.4 to 1 compression so it's totally streetable and we're running on 87 octane gas. So we out horsepowered their race engine by 85, 90 horsepower. Now a lot of that came from the camshaft right without flogging any cams straight off the drawing board using my cam program we swapped their cam for our cam. We picked up 12 horsepower at the top end, about 30 horsepower on peak torque, and no less than 80 foot pounds of extra torque right down at the bottom of the RPM range. So this street motor went from being a street motor to a real street motor with more top end. And I'm pointing all this out because that's an engine you can get from Terry Walters, right? You just pick up the phone and you call Terry Walters engines. I'll put the telephone number across the bottom, right? And it's all dyno proven. Now, those figures that you see pointed out in that uh, uh, still shot at the end of that video clip are the figures close to what we ended up with. That's not the numbers we're dealing with. And we're going to get right to that now and take a look at those numbers. In this column here, we have the output of the stock carburetor. That is an 850 CFM carb with a choke and straight leg boosters. A couple of things you should know about the 850. First, it has the lowest signal ratio in terms of Venturi vacuum and booster signal. Secondly, it is not designed for an unheated intake manifold. On that basis, we decided to swap it for the 9 50 HP, which although in terms of being civilized is not quite so much so, doesn't have a choke and is not vacuum secondary or anything like that, but it does have characteristics that an unheated single plane manifold would like. So on we go and let's have a look at the figures. As we can see, the torque went up at peak torque. But, more to the point, it went up throughout the torque curve. As you will see from the graphs, the torque curves rose pretty much throughout. So, our guesses to the capabilities of the 950 Holly were right on the money. Here are the torque curves. Blue line, the 950. Black line, the 850. As you can see, peak torque is up by some 24 foot-pounds and at the top end by about 5 foot-pounds. Here are the horsepower curves. Mid-range, the power is up by as much as 24 horsepower. Peak power rose by 7. All in all, the engine would drive in a more streetable fashion with the 950 carbon than the 850. Now, for what it's worth, I had AED build me a 950 version of the 850. This carb retained the choke, the electric choke, and the vacuum secondary operation. But it sported down leg boosters, streamlined butterflies, and a few other mods that up the flow to about 955, 960. And the carb worked very well. 
but for the life of me I cannot find where I put it. This all happened pre-brain surgery and I'm afraid my neuron links in that department have not connected yet. Our next move here is to install the 950 Dominator and see how that differs from our 950 HP carburetor. Well obviously our big block liked that extra 100 CFM but let's see if it needs more than that so let's take a baseline this time by putting a 950 dominator on it that's the latest type of dominator right I refer to it as a super dominator but that's not how Holly refers to it anyway let's now take a look at what a 950 dominator does and this is on an adapter plate of about two inches now when we ran the other car brushes, we ran those on with a spacer of about an inch and a quarter on so there is a slight difference as to how much spacer it might like but generally I think it gives a fairly clear picture of what's going on so let's go there now well here's the torque curve the blue dotted line is our 950 HP and the solid line 950 dominator as you can see our 4150 950 CFM carb definitely had the best curve up until about 5,000 or so. So that's what we would stick with for the street. From those torque curves this was the horsepower curves generated. As you can see the 950 Dominator only just tagged the 950 HP right up at the top end. Well here's the results of the 950 versus 1050 matchup. Not as much difference as you might expect. The 1050 only showed a gain above 5800 RPM and not much at that. So what's the problem? We'll investigate in a moment. Black is the 950 Dominator, red is the 1050. As you can see there wasn't a lot of difference. 1050 just sneaked it right at the top by a small amount. What's the problem here? Looks to be that it's either cylinder head or manifold don't breathe well enough. But we can fix one of those right away. From much experience testing intake manifolds for my best selling big block book, here's the front cover of it just coming up. tested many many manifolds I think I've tested every major prospect on the market currently this is my choice this is a profiler intake manifold a sniper junior it was designed by my friend Darren Morgan and he did an excellent job but that's only to be expected how does it differ from most manifolds well Basically, more work has been done on the shape of the plenum and how the ports pick up in it. But essentially, one of the things that you'll see with this manifold is that the runners tend to be smaller and that's made the difference. Anyway, let's see what that did on the dyno. I dropped this 4500 Dominator shot in just because I thought it looked good. What do you think of my special effects on it? I'm starting these curves or this curve comparison at 4200 RPM. Below 4000 RPM there was no measurable difference between the two. Right down to as low as we could pull the engine and that was 2800 there was only about a foot pound difference. You can see that the with the uh, sniper manifold on we took care of the airflow problem 
and the engine produced just one horsepower shy of 800. I had a chat with Darren Morgan and he said with this kind of cylinder head and cam and compression 800 horsepower was about it but on a high compression engine uh, say something in uh, 11 to 13 to 1 this manifold is good to about 850 to 880 horsepower th and that's out of the box Well, that's about it for this issue. Uh, as is customary, I've got a few things to say about subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting. Thank you for watching.